What up, cowboy fans and YouTubers? It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Welcome to today's edition of As the Cowboys Turn. What kind of drama and storyline can we get into today, huh? Well, let's start from the top. You got Jerry Jones on 105 The Fan pretty much getting a little testy with the radio host who asked him simple questions about leadership and he basically went off saying shut up and I'll answer your question he's a little testy he's a little testy um, he went on to basically say that Mike McCarthy was supposed to fill that void of leadership in the locker room that when he goes into the locker room he does not see a leadership void at all I'm like, where are you looking? Because <laughs> there's a leadership void. You just don't want to see it. Uh, maybe that's just me, but I don't know what Jerry is looking at when he goes in the locker room, to be honest. Um, you have him basically trying to sugarcoat everything going wrong. Um, he did say that there needs to be changes be it with staff, players, or whatever, and that if they see a need for change, they will change, which is, he's basically loading a bunch of bull on us because nothing's ever going to change with him running this team. Then you got his son, Steven, coming out with his quote-unquote saying that we are headed in the right direction. And as every YouTuber, analyst, uh talking head has said and laughed at that I guess the right direction is coming to a top five draft pick because we're not going to the playoffs with this I, I, I mean maybe that's the direction he was talking about but just not telling us is that they're heading for a rebuild and that's the way they see it that's why they've basically neglected everything they've pretty much just stopped worrying or caring about this season in total uh, little side note on that I just saw an article that uh, Washington football team may pick up Eric Reed uh, to play for them after losing Landon Collins Sunday and some people have said why haven't we gone after Eric Reed I don't know maybe that's more tanking that they don't want to admit that they're doing and uh, my uh, Rivera, he's the one who brought him into Carolina in the first place. And as soon as Rivera was out, so was Eric Reed. So you could see those two working together again. Uh, let's see. After all that rigmarole, we have Don Terry Poe and Everson Griffin two names that are on the trade block uh, everywhere you look you see Everson Griffin Don Terry Poe you got to kind of look for but most of the guys we picked up a free agency I think Derek Worley's on the chop it the, the trade block too um, they haven't panned out at all uh, like we said if Ha Ha Clinton Dix was cut because they said the guys we had at safety were better than him then you could tell this season was a wash that this team was not going anywhere if a guy who's a veteran can come in and y'all cut him thinking these guys now are better you knew you were tanking um, speaking of tanking Brandon Carr uh, there's been no real reason to why he was let go but people said that he did not jive with uh, defensive backs coach Maurice Lindquist now, I don't know what that means. Maybe he didn't like the scheme and he was vocal about it because he's an older guy and he's going to voice his opinion. If he thinks something's dumb, he's going to say it. You know, why hold that in? If you're trying to bring up the next generation of football players, why would you give them crap advice? Why would you put them in a position not to succeed, you know? And he might have said something to that effect and that got him canned. So, you know, drama, drama, drama with the Cowboys. Uh, as it stands right now, we are eighth in the draft. Uh, 
as far as picking right now. That's not a bad pick. Uh, except we could screw that up with the people running this team. That's never good. So uh, you never know historically what we could do with a top pick until this ownership shows that they've gotten over their own hump of being bad decision makers. Uh, next up, we have a uh, couple of guys. Zach Martin's coming back to practice. Uh, Joe Looney and Cheeto Awuzie. Those three are heading back to practice, get in some work uh, starting today. Hopefully, I mean, more than likely, Zach Martin's not going to make too much of a difference because that line is still decimated. Um, Joe Looney will probably back up Tyler Biotish. I don't see a reason why they should put him back at the starter position. If they put him back at starter, then you know they're taking they, they're not going to admit it, but they're finding ways to ruin their own season. That's They shouldn't do that. I, I kind of thought that when they put Terrence Steele in over anybody else. Like, this guy has shown he can't play. But you consistently keep putting him in over everybody else. So that means you're tanking. You're trying to find ways for your offensive line to just suck, you know? I don't know if that's a coaching decision or if that's a front office decision that we're tanking and we don't want to look like we're improving. But that's my opinion. Uh, and Cheeto, he should instantly come in and start over Worley. He'll probably man his normal side with Anthony Brown on the other side. You could put Trayvon Diggs back on the bench or have Trayvon Diggs start on the other side and put Anthony Brown on the slot. Uh, Whatever works, they're going to probably work in all DBs uh, except Worley because he's been burned too many times. They don't mind Trayvon Diggs getting burned because it's a teachable moment for him. And he's shown that he's up to the challenge of even a one mental mistake. He'll come back to try and correct it the rest of the game. So he looks like he's a fighter. He looks like he's got heart. Uh, can't say the same for the rest of this defense, unfortunately. Um, let's see. On this day in history, fun fact, uh, us Cowboy fans were proud this day in history because this was the day that Emmett Smith broke the all-time rushing record against Seattle, I do believe. And uh, I do remember the documentary with Quincy Carter that he was upset that he was not the quarterback that handed Emmett the ball off on that play. Uh, because he had been benched uh, for uh, conduct detrimental to the team, basically. He didn't have the right kind of attitude at the time. And uh, they went, I can't remember who the uh, backup was at the time that got the handoff. Um, I think it, it might have been Hutchinson back then. Uh, geez, because our quarterback situation was horrible back then. But, uh, yeah, on this day in history, Emmett Smith broke the all-time rushing record as a Dallas Cowboy against the Seattle Seahawks. I do believe we were at, it was a home game, too. So it was a nice little moment of celebration. Uh, he beat Sweetness, Walter Payton, and that record still stands when he, uh, has finished out his career. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to try to put it, uh, the articles in the description below. Uh, there are three articles online from Troy Aikman, uh, 2018, 2019, and this year. Uh, right around the same three-week time period, two articles uh, in November, or no, two in October and one in November, or two in November and one in October, but around the same three-week time period, right around this time of the season, midpoint, um, they asked his opinion of the team, or he was uh, announcing one of our games at the time, and he's been right since 2018, and I apologize, because I thought he was crazy at the time. But he said back in 2018 that this team needs to be blown up. He said that this team needs to be in a complete rebuild mode since 2018. 
2018, he saw it then that this team was not going to go anywhere with these players. A complete rebuild, he said. Think about that. He said that in 2018, that a complete rebuild was a necessity. That's before we traded for Amari Cooper and turned that season around, which didn't really matter. All it did was save Jason Garrett's job for another year. And speaking of that, in the 2019 article, uh, the game against the New England Patriots, where we couldn't even score one touchdown to save that game, uh, he talked about it again then. Uh, apparently, at the time, we were blaming Garrett and everything, and he even admitted then that blaming the coaching staff was the quick, easy way out of the reasoning why the Cowboys sucked. Even then, why we were so bad in 2019. We were losing against teams that we had shots against. And the only way he could point at it is it goes higher or deeper, either way you want to say it, than just coaching and just players. It was a front office issue, a management issue. And he said that in 2019. And then October 15th of this year, he again reiterated for the third time on the road he says that this team basically needs to just be rebuilt, but it will never happen as long as a Jones is running this team. Jerry Jones is the common denominator for 24 years of ineptitude. He said that. In 24 years, the only common denominator of us losing has been the people at the top of this organization. And nothing will ever, ever, ever change as long as they keep running this organization. And at the time, he's called for Jerry Jones to step down. But that's never going to happen. So, I don't know. I'm going to put the links for you to read the articles. And uh, it's just crazy that three separate times, three years straight, around the same midpoint every single freaking year... Troy Aikman has nailed it on the head that the problems of this team go far beyond players and coaches. And three years has just fell on deaf ears to where nothing's ever changed. And Mike Fisher himself said it. They, they, they keep feeding us the same BS and we shouldn't listen to them anymore. And I don't really because they're full of it. If Jerry's running around saying he doesn't see a locker room void that there are leaders in the locker room then he's blind let's just go ahead and put it out there he's lying to himself he's lying to us there's no way you can walk in that locker room and see anybody leading this team you can't blame the coaches they're not in there showering with these guys they're not in there in those huddles they can only do but so much it's on these players to execute you can't blame that all on the coaching staff you can't blame all the players either because some of them have just checked out. It goes higher than that. And that starts with you, Jerry, and Steven, and Will. It's on your jobs to make this team better. And in 24 years, you have not done that. And to keep telling us and feeding us this bull year in and year out, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. But we still sit here like slaves to the system and keep coming back for more punishment. We're gluttons for punishment with this team. We know they suck. We know they're never going to change. And yet we're still here. I, I, I apologize if that offends anybody. But that's just how I feel. <sighs> but that's the storyline as it is now. As the Dallas Cowboys turns, we'll return tomorrow. We will have updates, I'm sure, of player discontent or coach discontent. Uh, we'll have practice updates. Uh, we'll see if there's any movement on those trade blocks. And uh, we'll go from there. If anything majorly crazy happens, we'll get it to you. Thanks for getting this far through the video. I hope you have a good day. Take care. Stay safe. Me, a Dallas Cowboy fan. Out.